Hello, this is Father Andy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, who wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every time I read this particular section of Scripture, I think of how childish uh, James and John are. Uh, it reminds me of a little child who will go to their parents and say, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to promise that you're going to say yes. I mean, how silly is that? I mean, but that's exactly what they say here. Teacher, we want you to do for us what we ask of you. In other words, we're going to ask you a question, and we want you to say yes. And so I, I imagine Jesus, of course, he already probably knew what they were going to ask, being, uh, being the Son of God. But it must have tickled him to say, well, what do you want me to do for you? And it's at that point that they ask him something that must have been brewing in a conversation that the two of them have with each other concerning their role with the apostles. And I'm sure that there were a lot of ways in which they were trying to figure out, okay, how do we fit? You know, we know that Jesus has favor on us, but we want him to solidify that officially by telling him, or telling us rather, that he must put one of us on the right of him and one of us on the left. And that, of course, is the way that uh, rulers uh, basically uh, had their authority delegated, is the one who was the supreme ruler uh, was on a throne, the next in charge was on a throne to the right, and the next in charge was on the throne to the left. Now, James and John must have already figured out who's going to be on the right and who's going to be on the left, because the right would have been the, the highest point of power, the left, the next highest. So, uh, you know, he, he's being given this, uh, this question of about giving them a place of superiority among the other apostles as well as among all of the followers of Jesus that uh, basically uh, in his kingdom, in his glory, when all is said and done, and of course they're still thinking of this kind of an earthly version of a Messiah that's going to set up an earthly kingdom. We want to be there in power with you. And uh, then basically uh, Jesus answers a question with a question, you know, uh, can you drink the cup? Can you take and do with your life what I'm about to do with mine? They had no idea that it involved crucifixion. Can you be baptized with my baptism? Again, a baptism of pain and crucifixion, scourging, all of that. And they said, we can. 
And although the answer was fairly irresponsible at that point, Jesus confirmed that you will drink this drink. You will be baptized with this baptism. So they are going to face a certain future. What they didn't know is James would be the first of the apostles to be martyred and John the last. But again, as Jesus said, to sit at my right and my left is not for mine to give. It's for those who have been, for whom it is prepared. In other words, God has already established a certain uh, way in which he's going to express the kingdom of God. And uh, in this, however, Jesus wants to go on. And now at, at this point, of course, we got the other 10 apostles really upset. They are so mad that these two kind of went around them and were trying to find a way to gain power. So Jesus takes the 12 and he wants to set them straight. And he says, Gentiles, that's the way they do business. They lord it over people. And so, yes, if you're sitting on my right or my left, then you would be able to have that kind of power and authority. But that's not the way that I do business. That's not my kingdom. My kingdom is about serving. So if you want to be great, if you want to be one of those that is uh, someone uh, that is next to me, that stands next to me, it will be the one who serves the, the most, uh, serves the best way possible, serves with the most devotion, serves others, becomes a slave to all. Because that's why I came. I didn't come to establish my own authority. I came to establish the uh, redemption of the world, giving myself, serving others. And that is the sign, the true sign of greatness. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, one of the takeaways from this is, you know, this thing of uh, power and authority, recognition, this still is alive and well in the church. Uh, there are people who uh, want to make sure that people have noticed their contribution, that they've been given authority, that they've been given prominence that, and all of that. But even today, the purposes of God and the church exists to manifest a serving heart to all whether they're in the church or not. Our social teachings of the church all have within them the idea of serving others, of giving ourselves for others, of loving others. And the gospel is one of service, one of laying down our lives that others may come to the fullness of knowing Jesus. So again, uh, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God. It isn't found by seeing that your name is in the newsletter or the bulletin, but rather that you are one who is serving and giving your life in the service of others. That truly is a testimony to the relationship that you have established with God. And I want to make sure that you understand that that servanthood is not your means to heaven. That servanthood is the outworking of the fact that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ bound for heaven. That one who serves and loves Christ is one who gives themselves as a servant. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.